The Circle of Fifths. Aside from sounding like a Harry Potter fan fiction novel, it's actually one of the more confusing music theory terms out there. So today we're gonna understand what it is, and we're gonna learn three ways in how you can use it. Compositionally, like if you wanna like maybe write something that has a key change or something like that, practically to help you memorize chord progressions, and educationally, if maybe you're taking a music theory class and you wanna learn how to quickly identify key signatures. But first we need to understand what a fifth is. Aside from being my uncle's beverage volume of choice, it is a distance, an interval in music, right? A space between two notes. So if we have one note, for instance, this is a G on a guitar, a fifth, you might think that a fifth is just five notes away like, one, two, three, four, five. That's actually not the case. It's five notes away in the major scale. So if you take the G major scale, G, A, B, C, D, that distance, the space between a G and a D is a fifth. You go five notes away in a major scale. Now on a guitar, there's an easy way to find a fifth no matter where you are. You don't even have to know what the note is. Like let's take this note right here, the third fret on the A string. This is a C. If we go one, two, three, four, five, that's always gonna bring us, if you're rooted on one of the lower strings, it's gonna bring us down a string, back two frets. So a one and a five creates a power chord, which you probably already know. Another way to find a fifth below is to just go up a string on the same fret. So C to G, C to G, okay? Now, what is a circle of fifths and why is it a circle? Now the cool thing about this musically is that if you take a fifth away from any single note, and we're gonna take, again, in music there are just 12 notes total, right? We've got C, we've got uh, seven like letters, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and in between some of those are sharps or flats. Now E and B don't have sharps, so we've got 12 total notes, right? The cool thing about the circle of fifths is it shows you the relationship between all these and keys and stuff like that. So we're gonna demonstrate this. If we just do a linear thing where we go C and we take its fifth, C, D, E, F, G, we get to a G. Now if we start in G, make G the one and take its fifth, we go to a D. Now if we go to D, take its fifth, we go to an A. And then after A, it goes to E. A fifth from E is B. A fifth from B is F sharp. From F sharp, it's D flat. You can see this is C sharp or D flat. We're gonna call it D flat. Then after that, it's A flat or G sharp. We're gonna call it A flat. A fifth from there is E flat. A fifth from there is B flat. A fifth from there is F. And a fifth from there is back at C. So the interesting thing about all this is if you move through all the notes in fifths, you end up not repeating any of them, you, you end up hitting every single note in the chromatic scale, which is just all 12 notes, right? Now, linearly, this might not make a lot of sense, but once you populate this as a circle, it becomes a little easier to handle, I think, right? Because you can kind of go forward or backwards. In fact, another thing you may have heard is the circle of fourths. It's the exact same circle, it's just depending on which direction you move. So if we start at the top, we start with a C, right? If we go a fifth from there, it's a G, as we said, right? And then you go from C to G to D to A, and it kind of goes in the circle. Now if you go backwards, right? If you go from a C down a fourth, you get an F. So the, the interesting thing is like, is it fourths or fifths? It just depends on which direction you're traveling. You could see F as being a fourth of C, or you can see C as being a fifth of F, okay? So uh, now we see that this is, uh, uh, it makes a little more sense as a circle because it can go either direction. If you just think about it linearly, I think it's a little harder to understand. Uh, but also too, if you just look at the circle without any kind of context, it's just, it can seem overwhelming, like what's the difference between all this stuff, right? So uh, we're gonna kinda pause from the circle for a second and just talk about how you can use this practically, okay? Uh, the number one thing that I use it for is compositionally. And this comes in, you know, if you're, if you're playing or if you're writing your own song or something like that and you wanna make something sound a little bit different, you wanna go outside of the key, you wanna borrow chords from another key. Now the, the most obvious place to borrow a chord from is gonna be the key of the note that's just a fifth away from where you're starting, right? So if we take that C, the key of C, the notes are C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C. There's no, they're all naturals, there's no sharps or flats or anything like that. The key that is most like C, that's only one note away, is gonna be a fifth from that, so it's G. The, the notes of G major are G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and then G again. So the difference between the key of C and the key of G is just that one note, it's an F 
or an F sharp in G's case. So by adding that F sharp to the key of C, you unlock the chords from the key of G. For instance, like a D major chord is the fifth chord in the key of G. So a D major chord has an F sharp, where in C's key, the D chord is a D minor. So uh, uh, one really common progression you might see is like a C major to a G, to an F major, to a D, to a C. So well, that, that, that D doesn't technically, the D major doesn't technically belong in the key of C, we're taking it from another key, usually the key of G. Now when I say that the key of G is the one that's most like the key of C, uh, it's actually tied for being most like it because if you go backwards in that circle, you find the key of F. Now the only difference between the key of F major and the key of C major is the B. In the key of C, there's a B, and the key of F, there's a B flat. That's the only difference. So you could also borrow a chord from the key of F if you wanted to. Uh, you could take like the, the four chord in F, which is a B flat major. So if you're doing something in the key of C, right, you have like a C, to an A minor, to a G, to an F. You can go to that B flat, and it sounds a little bit different, but it doesn't sound too far removed because it's so close on that circle in the key that you're using. So it is a, a great way to maybe find a way to, to make a transition to a different key if you're writing a song compositionally. Now the farther you get away on that circle, the more different that song is gonna sound or that progression is gonna sound because you're using a, a, almost an entirely different set of notes the farther away you get on the circle from one key to another. So it's just a good way to kind of populate chords from different keys and kind of see which keys uh, work well with each other. Now a practical way to use the circle of fifths is to just think of intervals as fifth in, fifths in general to kind of help you memorize chord progressions. So we're gonna take one of the most, chord one of the most famous chord progressions of all time, uh, and that is Hotel California. And the way it goes, it starts with the B minor, to an F sharp, to an A major, to an E, to a G, to a D, to an E minor, to an F sharp minor, right? So that seems like a lot of chords for a chord progression, and it could be kind of hard, especially like maybe when you're first starting out, to memorize a group of chords that long. I think that was like eight different chords, seven or eight different chords, something like that, right? So what knowing fifths and knowing the relationship between chords can do is you can kind of cut down on some of that memorization. So if you, kn if you think of eight chords, and most of these going traveling from one chord, like a B minor, right? Instead of thinking, okay, I need to memorize B minor, F sharp, A, E, you can cut that down because this song travels in fifths for the most part. So we start with a chord, B minor, and just like a note can travel in a fifth from a B, a fifth of B, if you remember, is one, two, three, four, an F sharp. So there's a B, there's an F sharp. So a chord can travel in a fifth just like a note can. So a B minor chord, if you go a fifth higher, goes to F sharp, right? And then let's start with the new chord. Let's move this down to minor third. So we go to A. Now we just had to remember that we're going to an A and then remember that you're going a fifth from A. A, B, C, D, E. From an A major to an E. And then let's go minor third down from there. G major. You know, I don't even have to know the next chord. I know that I'm going a fifth above G. So G, A, B, C, D goes to D. Okay, so right there we've kind of cut back on some of the memorization because I know I got this chord and then I go up a fifth. And then I've got this chord, and then I go up a fifth. And then I've got this chord, and then I go up a fifth. And then you get to an E minor and an F sharp minor, so you kind of have to know how that goes. But even the chorus is the same way. It's just a G, and it's fifth, and then an E, and it's fifth, right? So uh, this is an example of a song that uses uh, the circle of fifths, or just fifths in general, as a way to... Uh, advance through a chord progression because not all these chords are in the same key. We're kind of borrowing chords from other keys. So you can think of it as borrowing chords. You can think of it as modulating or just changing uh, the key of one chord, however you want to do it. But I think for me specifically, thinking in intervals, fifths specifically, has helped me uh, kind of just have a feel for chord progressions and train my ear to how they're kind of moving differently, right? Now the next way we're going to learn to use the circle of fifths, is educationally, and maybe if you're taking a music theory class, and I would say, in my experience, this is where I hear people use it 
most often is to find key signatures, right? Like uh, if, you, if you've ever read music before, you'll know that the key signature is denoted by the certain number of sharps or flats in it, right? Like if you just see like a, a staff, an empty staff, it means there's no sharps or flats, it means you're in the key of C. If you see one sharp, it's like, okay, what, what is that? You have to kind of search for where it is on the line. And it's like, okay, the F, the F is an F sharp. So that must mean I'm in the key of G. And that kind of can be daunting at first, remembering which keys have which sharps and which flats and stuff like that too. The beautiful thing about the circle of fifths is moving through that circle, you're adding a sharp each time, right? So uh, like we said, we started off in the key of C. And when I first said the, the key most like C is G, G is essentially the key of C, but with one sharp, and it's F. Now, you don't necessarily need to remember that right away, it's good to know, but if you just know if the, at the top of the circle, we have zero sharps. The first spot, and the cool thing is it's kind of like a clock because there's 12 uh, notes, just like 12 numbers on a clock. So at 12 o'clock, we have zero sharps. At one o'clock, we have one sharp, which is the key of G, and this stuff will become second nature the more you do it. The next spot, spot so G's fifth is D. D has two sharps. Okay, and again, it doesn't right right now as far as just memorizing it. If you see uh, a piece of sheet music with two sharps on it to begin, you can just th think, okay, C to G to D. This is in the key of D, and then you can kind of keep going so on and so forth, right? So the the next D's fifth would be A. A has three sharps. A's fifth would be E. E has four, right? So on and so forth, and eventually we end up getting to flats, and we kind of come backwards. Uh, to where we started, kind of like how we, we, I said you could like look at this clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on if you want to go through fifths or fourths. The same thing with that C to an F. So C has zero sharps or flats. If we go backwards to F, F has one flat. If we go backwards again to where F is the fifth, right, uh, then you have two flats, etc. So musically, if you, you know, even if you're like a piano player and you're reading sheet music and you just want to kind of identify the key signature of something, it's a really useful tool to be like, okay, like this has, this has two flats. I have to go backwards instead of trying to think of like, okay, well, F has a B flat, what's like that? You can kind of just think in the circle of fifths, count forwards or backwards, and eventually you can kind of just put it all together. So I think it's a really valuable songwriting tool above all else because it, it kind of shows you how you can unlock chords and which chords are going to be the most commonly used between two different keys. So it can be kind of daunting at first to kind of think of all these sharps and flats and have to know all seven notes in a scale. But again, that stuff just comes with time and just kind of being more thoughtful about what you're playing, especially if you're learning to play songs. I think being thoughtful about the chords in a song and how they relate to each other is such an important thing and it'll make you such a better musician once you kind of see the patterns and stuff like this. And the circle of fifths is a fantastic tool in being able to recognize those patterns.